Talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, <laughs> big shit, big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing, my day walk on. Man, hey man, another day, another dollar. Yes, sir. Fifteen cents, something. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, we got a special guest in here today, man. This guy right here, he's uh, I heard he got a hell of a background. I talked to a lot of people about this guy, man. Came from uh, uh, um. Where you, where you from? Arlington. Arlington. Yeah, Arlington. Hey, check it, man. My boy Antonio Diego is in the building. What's yeah, going on, what's man? What's going on? What's Actor, going on? model, DJ. Really? <sighs> you doing all that? I'm doing a little something, something. Yes, sir. Oh, man. So, you know, um, just when we when we invite guests on, the first thing we want to do is just kind of understand who they are, right? Yes, right. sir. We're looking to try to understand where they come from, right? Before they got into the their person craft. before the name, because Antonio Diego, is that your government name? No, that's my stage name. It's that's my what brand I thought. Name. That's, that's what I thought. Name. So okay. we want to know the person before the Antonio Diego. How would you grow up and all that good stuff? So basically, um, I grew up in, I'm from Louisiana. And okay. I moved from New Orleans to Miami back and forth growing up. Landed in Arlington, Texas about five or six. Um, my mom and my brothers grew up pretty normal. Um <laughs> just grew up pretty normal what's normal to you going to school playing outside with your friends uh high school grew up with your mom and dad no nah, just my mom so some people said that's not normal yeah it's not normal we was doing a lot of things we was playing sports we was in the streets yeah was banging playing. you was banging yeah for yeah sure. banging i know so what you were doing let's normal. be real yeah <laughs> Be real, like, nigga. Oh, you were banging. You were normal. Bit, what was you? A crip or blood? No, no, no. I wasn't. None none of that, what man. was it? Nah. I mean, I want to hear I the was, truth. Don't come in there trying to give us no watered down <laughs> projected story that you trying to make us feel like. Oh yeah, I know. Well, no, that nigga faking, no, no, man. No, no, Let's no, get no, to I the real. Never, never okay, been. Okay, well, one thing I always tell people is that when you come on this platform, our platform is here to help and educate people because things that you've been through in your life. You're not the only one who's been through it, and there's somebody who's going through it right now. Right, right, right. And look, and about to look at our show. Gotcha. And you can help them go through whatever situation that they are going through right now. 100%. So, I don't know if y'all um, tune in to Say Cheese TV. Yeah. Rainwater, he been on there. Yeah, Rainwater was just on there maybe like two weeks ago. That's Mo3's manager. Right. He was the one that was talking about, just being real with y'all, where I grew up, Arlington was the worst area in DFW. That's where it went crazy. All the blogs was posting it. He was talking Dalworth. about- Dalworth. No, nah, he's talking about where? Arlington. Not Dalworth. That's in Grand Perry. That's in Arlington. No, he's talking about Arlington. Okay. Arlington. Arlington. Okay. It's between Fort Worth and we Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, what part of Arlington? East, North Side, South Arlington. Because okay. Arlington uh, is huge. So yeah, it's huge. Happen. It's huge. Yeah. So you got South Arlington, you got East Arlington, you got West Arlington. And out there, a lot of people from there aren't from Arlington. Right. That's the misconception. Like, oh, Arlington. Had that. I never thought They're Arlington not, was bad. I always, I knew Fort Worth was bad, but I never uh, thought of Arlington poverty, being... Poverty-wise, like... It, it wasn't much poverty. I ain't gonna lie. It right. wasn't like you compare it like South Dallas or somewhere like people like oh these niggas from there they automatically think he's hard or he, because right. he grew up a certain type of way. It doesn't really matter like what area you in. People like all all into y'all got big houses. There's no way y'all could be doing anything besides going to school and being good boys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it was. That was 15 years ago though. Okay. So, so um, how it, how was it growing up there in Arlington for you? For me, it was fun. For you. It was fun. Like I got a lot of things out of my system when mm -hmm. I was young. So when I when I hit my twenties, I had already been there, done that. It was time for me to focus on, you know, my real talents. Like and the things it. that you did as a kid, how much impact not having a father there had to do with it? A lot. Hell yeah, a lot. I was angry all the time. You know, my mom always told me I was special, but you don't feel special. You know, somebody tell you, yo, you, you're a king, you this, this, that, you're so young, you ain't never really been through nothing. You had, I had to go through some things to understand bullets missed me and hit my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother got killed, certain things that didn't, you would never think, looking at this person, what I am today, like, but back then, it's what I had to go through. Your brother How got killed. How old were you? Yeah, my How brother old got were murdered. You when, you, when your brother got murdered? For 2011. How old was I when Matt died? Shit, 
shit, what? Like 20, 19, okay. like 19? And yeah. you you were even more angry at that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, how, what, you got, what were you guys into for something like that to occur? I mean, you know, you got a bunch of young kids with no no real leadership. You know, um, growing up in this part of Texas, there's no real gangs, there's more cliques. So back then, it wasn't a bunch of young males that got kicked out of the football team, got kicked out of basketball team, got kicked out of track for doing things they shouldn't be doing, and they just came together and just started, you know. A menace. <laughs> you know, man, hey, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, but but the thing I said, we thought it was having fun. We didn't, bro. You, it's no different than 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 mine. Mine worse. You know right, what I mean? Right. I'm just being real. My, I, I, if I start going down my whole my whole path, you know that. Right. But but definitely, this is about you. But right. I'm saying, I think a lot of times people, when they are older, they try to tend to not relate because they're trying to fancy it up for where they're at at the time that they're there. Right. But but real talk, our young black men go through this. Yes, it's sir. a tougher time to try to come up in a society where people don't really respect you and they don't expect you to be anything. Exactly. And so. not only that, I think some parents hide it because they don't want their kids to go through what they've been through. They want it to paint it to make it look good. Well, mama can't stop your curiosity, though. That's no. the thing. My mom did. My mom is a great mother. She did everything she could. But, you know, when you're the youngest and you're seeing your older brother and them do stuff that you wish you could do, it's very enticing. It's like, damn, yeah. I can do that. So, Let me go to the party. I want to ride. Like I'm tired of seeing the trailer cars pull off and they come back with all these wild stories about what they were really doing in yeah. the streets. It, it, as a kid, it blows your mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn. But oh, looking yeah. back on That's that, lit. and you're grown now, and um, you've seen some of your faults that you went through and the uh -huh. way in which you went, how could you advise a young kid at that stage who hadn't been in a car yet but are hearing all of those fantastic, you know, things that he would be curious to go out here and do. How could you advise him being an older father figure right. to not to a, do that? It all has an expiration date. It may be fun, but it's going to end very quickly and very soon. And it's only two ways it's going to end. You're going to end in TDC or you're going to be in the grave. And when, once I start seeing that and realizing that, that's when I changed my life and I started going towards my gifts instead of running from them. Did you end up in TDC? Hell no. Are <laughs> oh, you nah. saying like it's such a bad thing? I know, he said water in the neck, so. I mean, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's yeah, a nigga, a, PMC it, ended listen, up in TDC, listen, nigga. He listen. died after he got out. Nigga, TDC saved him for a little longer to hey, be hey, on hey, there. You're right. You know, saves, TDC saved a lot of our black men. Nah, it, for sure. It, 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 it's times when... It, I know I could have been dead if it hadn't been for some kind of, something to stop me from right. going through that stuff that I was going through. So I always used to say when I was 23, 24, I'm either going to be, uh, by the time I turn 25, I'll be dead or incarcerated. Right. And I didn't care which way it went. Those were the, the options. Time. So, mm -hmm. so I, I was going, because I was hustling. Right. So I wasn't going to let that money go. And I already made it up in my mind, that's what I'm going to do. Not the cards you were dealt, those are the choices you make. Because no. I hear yeah, some people yeah, say that. Come at you no, than because me, the thing is that I yeah, hear a lot of people say that. Right. No, I hear a lot of people say that. But as they get older and they really look back, they realize that they had other choices, but they just didn't want to make those choices because as a kid, nobody couldn't tell them what to do. Even right, as right, you right. turn around and I'm asking you, well, how could you deter a child from going that path? But kids who have their mindset on, oh, I'm going to make this money. I want to go party. You can't tell me nothing. You owe. Right. But you can tell me. I can tell you from experience what you're going to go through. You don't got to believe it. You can get on YouTube and type in anybody's been through something in the streets. The story's going to be the exact same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change. Brack we know that. We Asian. know that. Yeah, that's why the same thing I would tell my son or tell mm -hmm. my little brother or tell somebody, a nephew, like, hey, like, what was it like for you growing up the way you grew up and the choices you made? So how many siblings you have? I have one brother that's alive and one that's no longer. And he's younger he's than He's older. He, I'm he's the baby. Older. You're the baby. Right. I'm the baby. So how did that if affect him when he lost his brother as well? Because <sighs> uh, I know it can either straighten you out or it can make you go down the wrong path as well. Um, for my brother, he kind of went, he turned up. I, for me, it was a... It was a Eye opening. Right. It shook me. Like, my world was, like, tossed up. Like, I was like, yo, this is real. Like... You know, you go to a party and there's a bunch of people out there and bullets flying, blah, 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 everybody running. It's funny when you get in the car and no one's hit. Mm -hmm. But when you're like, dad, and your phone's blowing up, yo, your brother just got killed. It's not funny no more. No. And then the thing about it is, you got all these niggas around you and you're like, yo, they killed my brother. Who's coming to with me to shoot one of them exactly, niggas? Exactly. And then the niggas are like, about. bro, we didn't sign up for this. Then it's like, damn, well, what am I doing this for? That's when I realized this wasn't for me because when, 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 when it got real, 
and I needed to, to certain people to show me what they really was about. They wasn't about what they was portraying mm. to be about. So that it opened my eyes like, yo, this is not what I need to be doing in my life. You know what no, I'm saying? I definitely get it, man. I mean, um, when you lose somebody like that and it's just abrupt and it just bam happens. Right. You know, it's, it's definitely, it, I couldn't imagine it. You know, I never dealt with it on that level. My daddy got shot in the head, but my uncle got killed in the same club. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I think about that, um, you and you know, were a kid at that stage. Yeah, I was a kid, but I remember it. I remember when my uncle died. I remember mm -hmm. when my dad had to go to that hospital. So, right. you know, these things are, are they, they, they're, they're the next level. But how do you change and how do you grow from it? You know, there's a message in everything you go through. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, because most of the time people be, man, how could God be really let that person die? Well, how do we know death is a bad thing? Exactly. If you never mm -hmm. experienced it. Exactly. So, you, you know, it, it's, it's hard for me to gauge it. If I'm being selfish because of somebody left and I'm not able to have them with me no more. Yes, sir. You know See, what I mean? And my point of view on that is the fact that when God takes somebody, your job is here done. Whatever is meant for you to do, you did. Right. And it's not your life is not your own. So you're here. Um, people are like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm going to do that. Really, it's how many lives you touched. Exactly. And even sometimes you may be doing something bad out here. You don't realize that somebody is watching your life and realizing, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. If it wasn't for that person being like that, that person might be somebody else. Right. You know what I mean? Very so true. it's a chain reaction. Everybody's life is a chain reaction in affecting other people. For sure. So did, you just have to realize did you what you ask how, do. how did your mom, how, how did it affect how did she, it? Your, her and y'all's relationship kind of? Because that's a tough then, thing on a parent, man. Oh, um, back then it was, it was more of a situation where my mom was like, why? Why you choose? I, I work hard. I do all this to protect y'all from this type of life. Why do y'all choose to be out here running with these these fools why why what what's wrong with going to college and you know back then that would be you me. know you you got two older brothers in your ear and then you got a mama in your ear mm -hmm. it's like you can't relate to me with nothing you're not even the same sex as me I, i'm not listening to you like i'm listening to my brother he's obviously been through some stuff um they're men i looked up to them because i didn't have a father figure so i looked up to my older brothers you feel me my mom it was just like her, I felt like her delivery at the time was more of, uh, excuse my language, bitching. No, no, you get then, it. Then really giving me a heads up, like, you in a fast car, if you don't slow down, you know what I'm saying, you're going to wreck. I, wouldn't, I wasn't trying to hear but that. But would anything she say, would that even get through to you? Just, no. just, just because of what you just said, because she's a female. No, not really. Nah, when I was 15, 16, I wouldn't listen to my mom about me nothing. Me neither. She didn't scare me. It was no fear in my heart. Ooh, I would have whooped. I would have. It don't matter about you whooping somebody. <laughs> yeah, that don't matter. Let me tell you it's something. Amazing. I ain't whooped me. I ain't, I ain't crying no more. I looked at her. I'm gangster. That's, that's what my mom looked at my mom and this she realized, like, this, my, this ain't my baby no more. He's yeah, not no the baby, baby no more. I was yeah. just like. But it's hard for mom because when you love somebody so much and you see them going down the wrong path, it hurts. And no matter what you say or do, it's like all you're expecting one day is for a policeman to come to that door and to say that he's dead right and you know and that's what took that's what honestly between me and you i don't even i'm being real with you i've done a hell of interviews i ain't never told anybody this type of part of my past you well, feel no, me? most people like come on boss talk i always drop that. like this because <laughs> yeah. this is a real conversation we yeah, don't like come this. in here I like I, we come in here to try to tell people hey man this guy went through it and now look what he's become we don't play with it bro right, right, right. like like why why do people go on platform just to talk about themselves and what they've accomplished and not tell about the other Where side they yeah yeah because people want to hear that bro shit. people love the backstory too right. people need to hear the backstory because our people are hurting and right. so that's the reason why we built this platform we didn't build it just to give everybody shine if that's the case hell I'd have part all my gold out nigga <laughs> nigga I'd have got fly on you nigga I'd have part my hey, old I school ain't my out chain. I, I, kept, I kept it real smooth I'd have my old school I kept, out. I'd kept the models and stuff we used to have here yeah. I'm, I can really turn up nigga yes, but sir. I'm just trying to I'm trying to be good nigga. yeah I like it I'm I like it <laughs> No, but you were saying something. That's the reason why I could, because of oh, your mom. Oh, um, my mom really, she, 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 uh, she really got to me. You feel me? And then like, I went through another situation that really was like, whoa, this is this is too much. It's like back to back to back to back to back murders. You feel me? Wow. Mm -hmm. And in jail, that's really when I was like, okay. Like, so you did go to jail? Yeah, I went to jail. I didn't want to okay. go to prison. I went to county jail, but it was okay. just like for how long? 
I did a month, yeah. two okay. different times, two I different times. It. Yeah, two different times. One in Lusteri, one in Denton County. So it was just like. What 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 you uh, uh, what 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 where at in Lusteri? What was that? Nigga? North Tower. Yeah, don't tell no lie, nigga. North Tank Tower. <laughs> yeah, maximum security. Already, nigga. Yeah, I ain't yeah. Maximum security. Yeah. New Island Jail. Yeah. Yeah. New Island Jail. You were that Deco, bad. Nigga, you gotta, you gotta, go to you gotta think. Up, you gotta think. If you get in trouble, well, I know in Tarrant County, if you get in trouble for anything. Gang related, you automatically on gang file for five years. I've already okay. been removed from that and all that situation, but my, my background at the time carried over to Dallas County. So when I got arrested, I could have went to jail for jaywalking. It was gonna put me in the maximum because of my mm. background. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, that's Man. when I realized like, damn, I know all these people. I know Willie, I know this person, that person. I'm like, I should be doing more of my life than sitting in this fucking cage. And that's yeah. when I got out, I was like, I will never go back to jail. Um, so it wasn't that impact nothing. It wasn't somebody Who said something to you Or something else no, that so happened you can't that change changed. Nobody till they ready to change okay. And me I don't like being told What to do I'm, just be, I'm an alpha Like niggas telling you When to wake up When to, t when to go to sleep And telling that's what you it's like To yeah. lay down Like what the Like what What <laughs> Then you sticking me in here At this crazy This nigga snoring all night I don't know this Like I don't know how people do jail, but when I when I went for to real jail It's one thing Going to city jail And then county It's two different experiences mm -hmm. That's like this It's not for me bro it's not this is and we've this interviewed is not so me. many people. We interviewed somebody in California Man. the other day that he went to prison for thirty five years. You're talking about freeway, Ricky Ross. No, no. it You're was about, uh, Foreman. Melvin Foreman. Melvin Foreman with oh, started Melvin the Foreman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. just interviewed him. We interviewed him. him. Old, older dude, Melvin. No, we're not playing no yeah. games over here. That's what yeah. I'm trying to tell 35 you. Thirty five years. Yeah, yeah. Like we we did freeway the same and day. And the reason what made him not go back was his mom. She finally told his him. His mom finally told him I can't do I can't. Have oh, my mom in. wasn't coming to see me. She didn't visit me not one time in jail because well, she told she, me. Well, well, his mom <laughs> never told him not to go to jail in all the years he's been going to jail. Right. But the last time when he came out, she told him, I can't afford for you to go back. I'm getting older. Right. Your brother and sister are older. You put that stress on your mama because right. she thinking the worst. And you like, man, I wish a nigga would. And he but she, goes, she thinking like, oh, my baby. Mm -hmm. So... But you know, you said your dad wasn't there, but where was your dad? Do you ever, do you know him? Have you ever met him? My dad was locked up, so. So yeah, you broke yeah. the cycle. Right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you know, so did she take you to jail to, to meet him? Nah, he was in pr Louisiana prison, and from what I was told, that's rock and roll. She didn't want me to experience, even on my psyche as a child, going into an environment like that. And you end up almost doing, Thank God you're not all the way there, she but you started tripping into that, you know, cyclap first. Yeah, I was curious. I, I was, I wanted to see uh, what, the, what the, what. I, I'm, I'm in my mind. I think it was a combination of like anger and curiosity. Like, can you really get killed doing this? Like, like I didn't think it was no consequences because there was no wow. one that told me, like, this is what happens when you choose this lifestyle. Wow. I love to hear this because a lot of people don't really say this type of stuff that this is what they're thinking as a child and yeah. as a mom i like to hear it because you know kids i want to be able to touch a child and say hey you know i understand what where you might be at and i can learn from other people's experiences i don't have to actually go through things myself but yeah, yeah some people I pray do you don't. Well, let me I pray you don't well, let's get on let's go on with it okay, yeah, yeah let's pull up out of that uh, <laughs> yeah. now let, we want to talk about how did you turn everything around how did you become how did you get into acting um, I got into acting professionally. Yeah. Um, through my manager Willie Johnson, J Three Productions. Yeah, I talked to him before this started. Dope dude. I like the mm -hmm. way he, he. We had a we had a good conversation. He knew you was walking into greatness, nigga. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But at the end of the day, he seemed like he would be the one to talk to since right. he started. So I'm going to interview him. Yes, uh, sir. We we got to set that up. I already know that. I got you. Of, but the thing I can say is, man. Uh, how did how did what, what did he see in you that made him feel like you could do something in acting? Nigga, um, can you act? Nigga, I did do something. Nigga. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. <laughs> I'm pretty well. So I've actually been acting. I've been acting since I was two years old. Oh, really? But yeah, I was in a uh, performance arts theater called Cats. It was a creative arts theater yeah. in high school. Yeah. So like, I always had an acting background, but I I was afraid to show that. Because of what my brothers and my peers around me would think. Oh, that's that's it. That's you weak. weak. Yeah, nigga, you gay, you in theater. Right. Like, nigga, we out here, we out here. Da, la, 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 la. It's not gangster to be an it's actor. It's not gangster to be an actor. 
that's what I went through growing exactly. up. So I'm like secretly this entrepreneur. Like I want to act. I want to dance. I want to be take pictures of my shirt off. But you know, my my surroundings. And back then, was, models were looked at as gay. Right. So back then, niggas wasn't going for that. My right. brothers was real crips. They wasn't playing that shit. Straight crib niggas. I knew it was something. <laughs> nigga was blue. Them niggas straight cripping. Nigga, what they sixty five dudes? What six old man? Yeah, niggas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. niggas was rocking rolling. With you, nigga. And they was rocking and rolling for real. One of my brothers is still rolling, but. <laughs> It is what it is. So it wasn't cool to be Antonio. I had to be little Tony, young Tony. I had to be. I had to really mask who I wanted to be and what I wanted to project the world to see to please everybody around me. Cause I didn't want to be shunned. I didn't want to be like, nigga, you ain't with us. You you get no bitches. Go this way. Like we're going this way. You go this way. So. And how old were you when you like? You know what? Screw this. I'm gonna be me. Well, he left him sometime because How? the nigga, he texted me, uh, what up, blood or something. <laughs> Sue wooed me, and I I don't know what the hell that was. You know what Yo, I'm saying? my teacher, listen, listen, listen. Yeah. I texted him. I listen, head. listen. I said, this nigga might be a blood or something. Listen, what I up, blood? Him, I'm I texted like, him yesterday. I said, what up, blood? And I, then I looked at my phone. I was know. like, oh, I meant to say, what's good? And my teacher now, <laughs> he was like, nah, nigga, you gangbanging. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga banging. You, what would you think? Like, nigga, shoot you that. That's the first text I get. I'm like, my bad. what up, blood? I'm like, I said, these niggas confused. You know what I'm <laughs> but that's the way it go when you start banging off something you ain't even supposed to be in and it's out hey, of Cali. You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey. That's the way you confuse as hell trying to figure it out. Hey. <laughs> so no, but but being an act being in the acting, have you gotten into any any uh any movies, any So scripts? I've done auditions for yeah, for some of the big can I tell them? Can I talk about it? You can talk about your auditions. Okay, so they're about to they I'm in the lineup for the, you mean to show the game? Yeah. yeah. So we just had a girl on here, Tasia. Yeah, she she worked in on the back Backside, end of the, of the game. producing for BET on the game. Okay, yeah. Tasia, 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 Tasia yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, she was just on here. Yeah, hey, she, man, she cool. wait a minute, man. What's going on? She real nice. Like, nice is a nice person. She's a nice person. Like, I like her. Tell you, I like you. What would you want to do? Man, all Tell of them, man. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. She yes, dope yes, yes. as hell, though. I Super love. dope. Did you, you need to go watch her. I put it out yeah, already. already. Yeah, out. I'm going to check it yeah. out. Soon I leave here. But yeah, um, <laughs> so I got I got a, what, how do you say it? Audition. I got audition for that. Um, they haven't called anybody back. Um, done stuff for Whataburger, shot for Toyota. Yeah. Um, was it Wingstop, Uber Eats? So I've wow. done a lot of stuff for us commercial acting wise. Being on any movies, I haven't got any movie opportunities. How do you yet. get these gigs? Is because of your manager that you get these gigs, or do you go out like if a person out here and wants to be an actor, don't have a manager or anything like that? Can they just walk up to these places and say, "Here's my headshots, my portfolio"? Can they do that? They can, but it won't be an expedited process. It won't be overnight. It won't be um, as smooth as you think it is. You're going to go through a lot of ups and downs before you get there if you just walk in there by yourself. Because in my mind, I'm thinking persistent is key. Man, like if I'm at that door every single day for the next right, right, right. six months, because being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur or owner, I prefer for a person to be coming to my door every day being persistent because I know that they're oh, not yeah, going to play with Willie's my time. Ass. Before he signed me, I was like, right. yo, Willie, like, I'm dope. I can do this. I can do that. And he was because like, okay. that show that you're not going to waste my time yeah. compared to somebody that's dropping something off and say, okay, call me when you're ready for me. Yeah, so I, I was hitting him up all the time. Like, what, two years? Like, Willie, Willie, that Willie, long? Willie. Well, I've known Willie for 10 years, you feel okay. me? But I didn't, I didn't, like I said, I wasn't. And he's always been a manager. For me? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. He okay. made some of the biggest talents to come through here. But okay. I, I, I was just like, yo, he was like, you got to show me how serious you were. So I had to lose weight, um, start taking my skincare better, um, just start doing things in a different light to really show, like, yo, I'm serious. Because you got to think, when you sign with these, these companies and these these agents, you're a representation of them. No mm-hmm. matter what you've done in the past, we, we, we can worry about what you can do now and what you can do in moving forward. Okay. So before I think I got signed, um, I just I lost a lot of weight. How was, much is a lot for you? Shit, I was, what, 195? I'm 150, 160 right now. Okay. So um, I lost, like, 40 pounds. Um, I started taking my health and my fitness more serious. I started doing acting classes. I just did a, a total 360 from just I party, 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 okay. drink, drink, drink. I was, I've been on tour before, so that was all that stuff was, like, in the nightlife. That, shit, that was cool, but acting, you have a really, it's like another notch. How long did it take you to turn everything around? From from what? From the first day that he said, you, you got to prove it to me. To I think it took me six months. When we had that real, real, real good sit down, okay. it took me like six months before he's like, okay, he, he's ready. 
Okay. He's serious. Because I was like six months every day sending him pictures. What you think about this? Just they keep working. Keep working. Because he sees me sees all day. Professional models in, at the highest levels. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's got models signed with people all around the world. So it's like me being popular in the club isn't going to transfer over to the acting and modeling world. So I had to show him, like, I can compete with these niggas. Give me a chance. I like that. I like the fact that you just keep going. You know what I mean? And from where you where you came from, it, it, you you should, you don't have a give up spirit anyway. Nah. You know, it seems like you really you know go for what you want. Yes, sir. And that's that's the that's the dope part. I mean, I'm glad we got the story. I, I did you know him? I already told me you had a dope story. Yes, sir. Me and him talked yesterday about you. I called people and asked people, "Hey, yeah. you know this guy? You know that?" He guy? said, "Norm." Yeah, mm -hmm. Norm T. Yeah, ah, I call him Norm Digi T. though, but GT, yeah. you know me, Norm he T. He from Marlins. I know. He, he know, told he me it was good for real. I know. He, he told me. I already knew all this stuff. You think I'm playing over here, my dude? <laughs> nah, he knew me when I worked with B. Hamden back in the day. Bro, this like, dude, B. Ham been on here. He been on here. Yeah, I was B. Ham's cool. MC for years. I went on tour with him all around the country. Oh. Him and Fat Pimp. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Fat Pimp been we on did. here. We did man, we been working over here, baby. I don't know about you. Ain't gonna miss us, man. We love hard. And we just started in January. Yeah, I got over 250 episodes more than like. Major. You said it was six months ago? Yeah. Yeah. So, major. I mean, it's just happy that you, you know, took your time out to come on the platform. Man. Oh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I said, man, if you guys need out. something else, any of your team, you know, we're we here to help. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. For the people who are really serious about what they're trying to accomplish. Right. That's more important. You know, some people just, they're doing this for a phase, but when you go in, we really want to be a part of it. Right. You know? So, as um, far as the modeling, I mean, do you feel like you, I mean, you look good, nigga. You, I ain't gay, nigga. That's my wife, nigga. But, nigga, you look like you could be a model. You look yeah. better than that other boy, C. James, that was on here. He was a model. <laughs> that nigga look better than C. James. He an actor, he too. He younger. And he an actor. C. James older. Yeah, C. James? C. James, I got to show you, he did his own movie, man. He's he from Arkansas, Little Rock. He did his up. whole movie, it's acting, dope. producing, everything. Lie. First time he's yeah. ever done Times that. Times have changed, man. That's what I was going to ask you, too. Like, yes, the people we say acting and all that, but there is so much technology out here that, and so and many resources that you can do a lot of stuff, a right. lot of stuff on your own. You can create, look at Country uh, Wayne. Look at the things that these people are doing. They're impactful. Yes, they so. don't need nobody to really do nothing. They getting bread. Exactly. And so I'm trying to figure out, you know, but there is a level to it, though. You got to understand what your what your and that's gift the difference. is you know that's, what i mean that's the difference like for example um i had i used to blow my manager's phone up and like just complain like willie why i'm not signed yet <laughs> this person's trying to sign me i want to sign with them right now he was like okay well you can either wait for the people that i think you should sign with to sign or you can just sign with the first couple agencies that reached out to you and i took his advice and i and i've i've seen the difference it's a big difference Wow. Like you said, levels of... And that's in the entertainment industry for anyone, yeah, really, yeah. when you think about it, because a lot of people, when they start out in entertainment, they always so excited and amped because the first thing you want to do is sign. Just like somebody buying a house, you want to jump out here and the first house you see, that's going to be my house. I want that house. Mm -hmm. But really, in everything, you have to have patience because Man. with time, you learn so many things. If you just be quiet and don't talk as much... People will tell you a lot. I've been, I've had my, my, trust me, I've had my meltdowns plenty of times where I was just like, I don't want to do this no more. But it's hard. It's very hard because it doesn't well, work. Well, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But it's right. hard. Yeah, 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 it's hard. When it's I say, hard, when I say hard because you got bills to pay. People have bills to okay, pay. Okay, work. Nigga, to I, I work and I, I stay up all night. I done showed you how it's done. Hell, yeah, let's be real. It, sometimes I would never hustle harder for another person than they hustle for themselves. You know that. You can't, you got to go get it. Uh, exactly. I mean, I would never work for a job and give them eight hours and not give my own business eight hours. Yeah, that's 16, man, on a day. I ain't trying to hear it. Right. If I can do it for them, I can do it for me. Right. That's the whole game. But you got to be willing to go the extra mile. Most people won't even go a quarter of a mile. Not so we, we, we plan. You, you, you got to have sleep. You got to have the right thing to wear. You got to have, nigga, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got you to go harder than that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't go hard, then go home. Like, like, man, I know, I know some white guys ain't playing like that. Nah, I'm being real. Out. Niggas who really want it, they do want you? It. They want it and they go get it. So all this, it's hard. Yeah, yeah it's hard, nigga. Let's go. I it was say, hard I, on your ancestors. I always say that you know it's saying? not as it's not as hard like to get in the business. It's hard to stay consistent because yeah. you're gonna have situations where you go on auditions and you know you nailed it but they pick somebody else. That fucks with your psyche. It's like, damn, 
how did I not get this? I did my audition perfectly. The lighting was perfect. The sound was perfect. Like I sent it to my agent, my other agent, and my manager. They all said, this is amazing. I submitted it, did not get selected. You know why? You didn't know you nobody. You can sabotage it was, no, yourself no, as well. With your know. mental, I always tell everybody, is how you perceive <laughs> things. Because you can always say, okay, I didn't get it because I have a bigger role coming up. Yeah, but and if I had gotten that, it would have conflicted with what I'm gonna have coming up. Right, right, right. You know, you can always switch your thinking. Well, I agree. With I that. always just say I'm one yes away. Yeah, and and I, I'll be looking for no's because I know already it make me stronger. I'm crazy. I'm looking for the no's. Some nose people take those no's and you know, sabotage the themselves. Nose is dope. Be like, man, I can't stand this. I give up. <laughs> You yeah, can't be like that. Yeah, you can't. I mean, if we was, uh, I mean, every door don't just open like that. You know what I mean? If you really want something, the universe, you got to go through it. You got to keep keep going knocking. through it until you get it. Right. right. That's the whole game. So where you at with the DJ? And do you know music? Like you don't know no damn music. Give man, me, give me. Crazy, how long man. have you been DJing? Yeah, I've been DJing like, six years. Let's talk okay, about that's that's music. Come on, that's, 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 that's not that long. That's not that long. name just was on here. Listen. You know who was just on here? Uh, 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 DJ Chose. No, uh, yeah, he was on here. But I'm talking about uh, Tasia <laughs> Alexa. She's. She, I heard her the next day, two or three days later. How she get down on 104? You know what I'm saying? What do you do, man? Can you DJ? Where can I catch you at, nigga? I got a residency at Opera, <laughs> opera. On, on Fridays okay. in Dallas. So every every two Fridays I'm at Opera and I'm at Bloom on Sundays. Wow! And go in. Yeah, go. You seen the interview? You know, you uh, seen the videos on Instagram? I B Y B. He's a DJ. You heard him? No, I never heard. DJ I B Y B. We had DJ mm -hmm. Frost, Jack Frost on here. Jack we Frost? Had, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah you old school nigga with definition DJ. Yeah, um, fresh. DJ. He don't know nobody. You over here? Yeah, nigga. He know. He, he, he in the streets. He tapped in. You don't know. You yeah, a new DJ. Rock. You DJ at all the white you know parties, nigga. I know what's going on. You with the white folks, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, that nigga light skinned. They got good hair. He at the white no, parties, no, no. nigga. So, so listen, you know, listen. That's what I'm, 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 I'm going to be real with y'all. Okay. I'm going to be real with y'all. They brought me to K104. Gio Cook them brought me in in 2015. I was supposed to be like the new, fresh personality of K104 before okay. they hired Hit That. Okay. okay. So they brought me in. Gio and them prepped me up. They had me working with the Vox Pro, had me working with Cat Daddy, had me working with Breeze. If you know Kevin, uh -huh, these are the real. Uh -huh. These are the. Okay. I yeah. had an interview with Christina the next day. And Gio said, All you got to do, Antonio, is go in here, just be humble, be cool. They're going to they're gonna put you on the street team, and then you're going to work. They're going to work you in. They're going to start letting you do Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Gio, why would you tell me that? They didn't do it. No, 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 no. They're no. looking for somebody hype. No, no, no. What? My ego at the time. You remember? The, remember? You ever heard of a party called Latex Grand and PV Weekend? Uh -huh. Yeah, they started like like seven mm -hmm. eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Me, DJ Frosty, A Bay Bay, B Ham, Fat Pen. We started that festival. It, the first year we did ten thousand. The second year we did twenty thousand. And then I was doing stuff at UNT Street Team. How dare y'all say that? Y'all said y'all wanted me to be on sound the radio. Like, sound like Vita Loca when Vita said that they wanted to put her on the uh, um, we, on the weather. No, in traffic. In traffic. 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 So listen, listen, yeah. listen. Traffic. This she is said, our truth. Ain't no damn Alicia Speed. So when he told me, <laughs> when, when, when Gio told me that, I got in my feelings. But I was like, this it's not what you, in you my head, I was like. from somewhere. Now, I was 20 years old. Now, I, I understand. No, I was 22. So I went home that night. I talked to my you know, my, my girlfriend at the time, and I had yes men around me back then. They, oh, man, okay. fuck that, Tony. <laughs> nigga, nigga, you bigger than that. Nah, nah. I said, okay, so what should I do? They said, when you go in there, you tell them what you want. If they don't want it, you fuck K104. I said, Ooh. all right, bet. Man, I went in there, interview glasses on. <laughs> I, sat down, I sat down, she was like, so, um, you know, you got a got a got a got a look got you got some good um, recommendations. Like a lot of people are rooting for you. Right. I said, man, fuck that. I want this, 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 and that. <laughs> no. <laughs> sabotage my interview. I sabotaged wow. it. She was like, Are you cool with street team? I said, I ain't putting up no tents, lady. I'm not. I said, I got a team that does it for me. I don't know who y'all thought y'all hiring. <laughs> get them, get them. And you want out. Listen. Yeah. I told them, yeah. literally, they said, have a nice day. Gio called me two minutes later. It, he <laughs> he would have cussed you out. He said, why did you do that? I said, damn, Gio, I ain't. I, I, ain't, I ain't down with the street team, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to totally. think about yeah. this, too. But, right? Yeah, in that business, <laughs> they all talk. But the difference. The, all the, the different thing, companies, they talk man. and do you they're really, friends. Do you feel like it was meant for you to be there? Or do you feel like God put you in different places for different reasons? Honestly, this, the stages I've touched now and the things I've done and the people that I'm associated with now, 
I don't know if I would have done that if I would have gotten to radio yeah. 10 years ago. God you would have still been in the radio. Man. Right. You would have still listen, been in the Listen, man. Antonio, God don't make mistakes. Right. Everything that's meant, he, he, it was written. Right. Mm -hmm. When you went in there, that's already written. When you said it, it was already something <laughs> that was going to happen, bro. You right. ain't, it ain't nothing you did wrong. You right where you're supposed to be right now. Whatever God have for you, guess what? It's coming to you and can't nothing stop it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's the most important thing right there. See, everybody want to, we all act like we got it all going on, but we only, we, we stand on one side of the door and we look through a peephole of a key of life, Man, but God real. stand on the other side and see the whole see the thing. Whole picture, we right. got to stop acting like we so in control when we just vessels being used. Bro. And that's what I learned. That's, I realized that over the years, like there's a lot of opportunities with stuff that I see people doing like, damn, that, that was supposed to be me, but yeah. I fucked it. I dropped the ball. Yeah. Like, so now in my career, I don't drop the ball as much as I used to. I try to be, you know, more business mind. I'm still working on my personal a little bit, but doors have been opening up for me because I stopped being like that. I was in my own way. My ego was just too, too big. Cause you gotta think coming from, at the time, my early teens, to being on the road with B-Hemp, when B-Hemp was big, mm -hmm. nigga, you couldn't tell me nothing. When Bricky Bobby came out, you know, be him yeah, from Arlington. Yeah. That was the come biggest on, song. Man. He was on one of Park. So to come, they grabbed me from a gang. It was like, yo, that come saved on. my life. Big Rick, them, I give my credit. Rick and Buckle, yeah. baby. They he saved been my on life. Yeah. I've, been, I've been on his cook show. If you, yeah. if you watch, the, popping, yeah. Ask if Big you Rick watch his me. cook show, of course. Boss Talk been on there already. Right. We was on last Rick was like, Rick was like, uh, I was best friends with his son. You wow. know, they were shooting in our, our houses and stuff and doing. Rick was like, nah, you need to be on the road with us. So he grabbed me. That's my mom, like, hey, yo, I want to take him under my wing. You know, Put him around him. Gave, that, you that, gave you that. I got to call figure. that nigga, man. That, that was the right. person. Father figure. Yeah, he was the person. I give Big Rick's credit. He was the first person that showed me what the music business was like. Right. At, at eighteen, well, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old. Wow. Okay, but out of all the industries that you um, cater to right now, which is your right. model, your um, acting, and DJing, which one you you feel like you are going to be the thing in? <laughs> I'm gonna be real with y'all, man. <laughs> the acting is a fool, I'm telling y'all. Bro. Y'all can laugh. On, bro. I ain't about to laugh. I'm just saying. Yeah, listen. Bro. Everybody's like, nah, you gonna blow up as a DJ. You're not. Listen. You're a very bro. good actor because I saw on your I, page. It is all right. Hold on. That I saw your page. I saw a skit go, that you did. Like, that nigga was believing. Good, you, didn't, you didn't look like. That nigga is oh, not. No, I don't believe yeah, him. Yeah, I believe nigga, you. Man, I'm you going to see, see me in about six nigga, months. You're going to be like, we're going to see you. I'm not a yes man to come up in here. I want to see it. I have to believe it. I'm like, Dalton Thomas. I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? Denzel, Will Smith, Michael B. Jordan, Antonio Horton Jr. Man, let me get on up. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, man, it's been another great it's segment crazy. of boss talk one listen I'm just <laughs> listen that's it's a very there. high hat. It's there, like, bro, though. I, and I'm I just waiting for you. one yes. I commend yes. you, bro. I commend it's you. It's just one yes. Just I one. you, bro. That's, that's one that's, yes. That's, that's, you're supposed to think like that. So, okay, so in today's Where society. Where the hell are you going? Wait a minute. Have you just, you doing this from Dallas or you going out of, you going places trying to get these I'm gigs? rarely, I'm rarely home, honestly. I'm okay. rarely, yeah, I'm rarely in Dallas. But my, but my thing is that, every, okay, in today's, in today's industry, you have to wear many hats. Meaning oh, like man. you can't just be an actor. Just right. like people who are rappers, you can't just be a, a, a rapper. You have to be a total brand. Okay? That's why I tell this little one So right here when I say time. that, meaning like, okay, you're going to act, but do you have any inspirations to be the director, the writer, the everything? Right. Because most actors I eventually... I do, but the level that, the, the level that I'm playing on right now, I got I to gotta master the acting craft first. I can't go into it and like, yo... I want to do this, like nigga. You haven't even got your first feature film booking yet as a, as a major actor. Like, you know, that's the goal is to get that first major booking and then learn, master my craft at that. Then go into producing films, then go into directing. But I have to master the craft of acting first. But you can have your goals set, written down, and so. Oh yeah, you know, I got a vision board. So, I got right. in my career. So what exactly? What's your end game? My end game mm -hmm. is to be a director. L years later down the road, directing my own. So what kind of film? Go ahead. Action. Okay. All action. So that that's what you like to acting as well? I like, yes, action and comedic acting is, is where I think so I'm. So you think you're funny? A little bit. Hell no. <laughs> you think I'm funny, Willie? Hell no. Am I funny, Willie? <laughs> I don't know, my funny, bro. Nothing. You, <laughs> nah, them your homeboys, my nigga. These your homeboys. I don't want to make me laugh, I just made these two weeks ago. I just made these two weeks ago. I ain't you laugh. You know what I'm saying? What you got? All right, you ready? 
I'm not doing this with you, nigga. Nigga, gonna try to make me laugh. But I can see, I can see the um, action. I can see the acting, like the, you know. Let's, I see let's, action. Let's, um, I ain't gonna tell you to do a role, cause nigga, I can act myself. Right, we all black. And, um, we all blessed. You know, like um, you know, um, you 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 have to have a special thing in you to do comedy like that. Be comedic. Uh, you're not Jamie Foxx, nigga. You right. ain't showed me nothing. Right I got now. I got I got clips from hyenas. I did improv. I, I sent them to y'all. I'm actually hilarious. But you I'd did? like to see. Yeah, it. I just feel like honestly, it's too much to for, to, to do that right now. Like right. I'm juggling acting, modeling, DJ, and the comedy is the hardest lane to yes. get into Dude. because it don't matter how good you think you are. If you go up there and bomb, it's it'll it'll mess your self esteem up. I've never bombed, but I've seen. Com comedian Dizzy Banks is one of my best friends. He bombed. No, I watched. You put Dizzy. his name out there. Yeah, I, I watched Dizzy. Right no, after not him. Bomb. <laughs> no, he didn't bomb. <laughs> Dizzy, listen. The nigga bombed right after the statement. Dizzy. Bomb. Dizzy. He said, he Dizzy. Said I watched him go from doing small college tours mm -hmm. to being the number one. He's like the number one guy on Instagram right now, Dizzy Banks. Yeah. Okay. And he told me in Tallahassee, Florida, he was like. He's like, Tone, you got it, bro. He's like, I can look at you. You're annoying it. Like, there's something about you. He's like, you just got to go after what you want. That was in 2016. After that, that's when I really started taking shit to the next level. So is that the only um, genre of acting that you, you're like, you know what, let me put this to the back. Will you do all the other? Of course. If I get casted, I'm doing it. The horror film. Horror, the comedy. Action, the action. Action. Anything. Romance. Romance. Everything. Everything. It's you can't limit yourself. I would never I would never tell my agent or my managers, nah, nigga, I don't wanna do that role. That's just something that goes against my moral code. You, you ain't know 20 me? no more. And you so you're not going to put on a dress? For an interview. You is you're ready gonna to go You're going to put on a dress? Now. Right. You said, Would you put on a dress and, and um, act in act as a female? For sure, 100%. What's wrong with that? I know my sexuality. Because I know some comedians who say they wouldn't even do it right now. Because they got they letting the outside world influence how they feel about themselves. You can't convince, like, you can't tell me what I am. I know what I am. And I can show you better than I can tell you. You feel me? Like, a lot of people look at me, oh, this little light skin motherfucker, blah, blah. You really have no idea who you dealing with, sir. You mm -hmm. just be cool, be calm, like so just Miss, be calm. You could put like a Miss Doubtfire, or a Mama, or what's Big Mama? Norbit. Uh, Norbit. Look at Eddie Murphy. Look at the greats, Martin mm -hmm. Lawrence, Eddie Murphy. They they didn't shy away from wearing dresses and doing that stuff. Why I should wanna, I? I want to know but something. They, 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 they kind of say it go against how like the male, you know, the dominant male. Why black, though? Why do you feel man. like that? That's a lot what some of them say. A lot that, of them say you know? that. They say it goes against it. it, 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 it yeah, they want to feminize our, our like culture. Like Dave Chappelle won't even put on. Black yes. men. I'm just telling you how people speak about it. It's, Dave Chappelle has said but that. But they said that in today's society I've with the internet, that. you don't have to do it. Right. So Dave Chappelle, he doesn't do that. He won't, right. he won't he wear won't. a dress. He's against but it. But you don't right. see a lot of white comics doing it either. Well, you do. Miss Doubtfire was white. That's all you got. I knew you got just I'm said not that. Done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. You ain't got nobody else. Miss Doubtfire. Um, the the guy on SNS, oh, was it Saturday Night Live? Them niggas do all that. I'm not counting. They all do it. My thing is this, if if they come to me and say, Antonio, we want you to play a woman, we're going to pay you 250000 per episode, my girlfriend's going to be on set nine times out of ten, I'm going to do it. Like, it's not, okay. it's I wanna, comedy. Will you play um, a gay role? Yeah, I would. Kissing another guy on, on there. <laughs> man, you know God is good, man. Hey, I mean... To that, to that extreme, I don't know. I have to. I would have to really do some soul searching. But for wear a dress and do comedy, I'm with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, but the broke back mountain. Because I've not. heard. Because I've heard. I've heard some actors would say, you know, they'll go on there and yeah, they'll kiss a girl or I mean a guy or whatever, but they're not gay. Right. So, but then once people see that, they're gonna start. You know, when they see them on. Then Will Smith. They're did gonna it. say that. Will Smith did it too. Right. But the, Jamie Foxx did it. But, Martin but, did it. But they're saying that Will Smith is bisexual. How do you know that? Who's who's telling people this stuff? And who the hell is they? You know, right. I'm sick of they. I'm sick of they. Society. I mean, the, those trolls on the internet. Everybody. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> did you, I, I don't know. I don't. The Me Too movement is strong, brother. Yeah, but I, I don't get it honestly because of my background, where, where I was raised. I don't even. It's either this or that. It's no. It's not. It's not like. Um, how do you put it? Like, I don't look at Martin Lawrence for doing Big Mama and be like, man, that nigga's bisexual. Like, yeah. he's doing a job. Look, he's he's giving entertainment. Like, I don't look at them putting on dresses as, you know, it's, it's just a role. Right. But whereas I've seen more and more films where you have a lot of guys or females No, I've had kissing. castings. I've right. had castings come to my email and they're like, we want you to, you know, um, That's more kiss prevalent. another man, right. da, 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 da. And, you know, I just, it, it, it depends on. If How much I'm, money they're paying. 
Nah, not even that. Not even that. It just, like I said, it just depends on the mood. You feel me? Like, well, I mean, you know, with the way society is today, things are changing rapidly. You know, uh, what's that Wade boy and his son? That you know, they make it okay to do things that are different. You know, that's different. Hey, though. That's like saying, super no, no, different. no, no, no. I'm just saying. You know, you, you know, the, this whole Me Too movement. A lot of right. things. People doing things a little different than when I was growing up. I right. mean, you know, I, I mean, Boosie spoke out about something that just went on with the baby. Um, they're, they're getting a lot of they're opinion. getting a lot right. of flag about being straight right now. Um, this, this whole thing is flipping like this. You know, the world is changing, man. And, it uh, is, but I don't know if it's going to be for the good or for the bad. But I do know it's changing. Here's my here's my outlook on. I was at Rolling Loud when the baby did that. I was you like, was there. I was there. I looked. I was literally backstage drinking. The nigga performed, and he started talking. He didn't say nothing offensive. He was directing that towards one artist. Mm. He wasn't talking about the LGBTQ community as a whole. But you know they'll take it and go. I mean, anybody will. You talk about fat people. Oh, you body shaming, nigga. You talk about black people. Oh, this nigga's racist. No, right. like, I feel like everybody is entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. There's straight, there's gay people who talk shit about straight people, and for whatever reason, the straight community don't get on them. So y'all can't get mad if the LGBTQs get on y'all. Like I feel like. Everybody's a town to their own opinion. It's not them versus us or, or us versus them. It's we all together. Like if you say I ain't shit, then nigga, you ain't shit. That's and so crazy feel, that you, you said feel that. Like, if you feel like that, that's what it is. If you no, feel I, like I, I like the way you explained no, it. I like actually. the way I said it because even I was listening to um, Breakfast Club earlier and they were talking about there was a um, a radio talk show host or somebody a commentator, a sports commentator, and he um, acted like. What accent that was like an Asian accent or mm -hmm. whatever with saying something, mm -hmm. and he had to go back and apologize. And apologize for what? Because what like, did you say that was offensive? But it's like if you act like you're somebody else when you're not, everybody say that. Oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. But then what he said, he was like, but people act like they're Caribbean with the patois all the time, but nobody ever says anything. They act like you know, people. If a white person come up with. Uh, a, a black dialect, then they jump on them too. I mean, it's a thing where everybody is so. And honestly, have you watched? Everybody I mean, super. You Did you watch the, what's the guy's name from the seventies? What's the guy's name? Not Red Fox, but uh, Archie Bunker and and uh, what's the nigga Jefferson? George. That was the most racist shit I've ever seen. <laughs> Go on YouTube and watch them episodes. They saying the yeah, c word. The they saying the n word. The they problem? saying coon. Honky. <laughs> they say all that on TV so it's like if you go back to look at that verse now everybody's too sensitive mm -hmm. I get what you're saying man but we're in a different day and time you know people are changing they want everybody to go to the same bathroom together right restroom uh, this, this, this whole thing is flipping rapidly like my I thing, said earlier. my only thing I'll say about everything that's going on in the media leave the children out of it that's my only thing when it comes to anything gang banging uh, uh, what's your sexuality what you like animals whatever leave the kids out of it. Don't push stuff on kids. Uh, don't I agree. Don't peep, don't make the kids think gang banging is cool. Don't make the kids have to choose whether they want to go to a men's restroom or a women's restroom. Yeah. Let them be children. They're still innocent. You and, feel and, me? And, and and it's so crazy because they they definitely you know try to challenge them with the stuff at an early age, even on right. cartoons and all this different stuff that they're adding. It want to talk about Robin to, the other day? Yeah, Robin. They say he done flipped over. <laughs> but how can you do that? He's a cartoon. He's a fictional character. Who? They say he's bisexual. The writers are bisexual. You can't force it on kids. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> that's let's what be they're, honest. They're There's nothing wrong it. with that. There's no, nothing they're wrong putting with it into and these are what kids are watching. Man, listen. But I, I, I'll say this, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm we're gonna pull up and, and move, move out of there, okay? I want to ask you about the top three artists of all time in music. Let's get back to Dead music. Dead or Alive. Okay. Dead or Alive, because you're a DJ. I need to know your top three artists. Number one would be who? For me, I would have to any have genre. Tom, any genre. Any genre. Any genre. I got to go with James Brown. James Brown, good That's choice. That's my number I like one that. artist I love that. of all time. Like, Can you do his name? Michael Jackson, too? your For number sure. two? I'm, I got it. I got it. Uh, number two definitely is Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um. And who else you got? Going. Number three would be, I'd say musically, I gotta go with Michael Jackson, James Brown. I gotta go with Chris Brown, or Kanye West. One Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Yeah. Chris Brown better than Michael Jackson. That's what somebody said on here the other day. Don't don't get mad at me. Yes. Woo! We got an agree on here. They say Chris Brown is better than Michael Jackson. Let me tell you, it just went down. Let me explain something to y'all. It just you, went down like you that. You gotta here. think, Michael Jackson. 
was was got all his sauce from the Temptations, the Five Heartbeats, James Brown. That's who he saw coming up. Otis Redding, Otis Williams, all of them. Chris Brown got his shit from Usher, from Omarion, and he perfected it. He took it. Michael Jackson wasn't doing what Chris Brown was doing. Are you crazy? Man, come on. Nigga, please, man. Let me tell you something. Bro, bro, you playing? You let me tell you what you what you man, doing. Man, you right niggas now. is older than me. I tell you, bro. you all the truth, you man. You ever seen? If you seen Mike in London or some damn where? Yeah, boy, he was he doing stuck arenas. Stuck his hand out of his glove, glove out the window. Everybody fell out in the crowd. Chris Brown ain't did nothing like that. That's power, man. man he could go somewhere and just go. Let me tell y'all. If you remember, ain't nobody ever did this stuff, man. Let me tell you something. What I saw with my eyes, I never saw Michael Jackson in person, but we had a show with Chris Brown down in Hildago, Texas. And you comparing that to Michael Jackson? Hello, listen, listen. We go to do the sound check. You know how you go to a venue and they doing sound check or whatever, right? We get to the venue, right? There's ambulances pulling up. I'm like, wow, these damn ambulances. This ain't no Lil John concert. It was like for all the girls that's about to be passing out. For who? Chris Brown? Yeah. I seen them during the show. They was cycling girls. And you, say, and you think that's on the level of Mike? I mean, you asked me a personal question. Bro, Mike so. do this like it was all the time. It wasn't. He Michael Jackson wasn't rapping too, man. He didn't have to. Man, listen. Michael Jackson sung at five. Chris ain't do that. He sung where? He was singing at five and six. It's a it's phases of Michael Jackson. True. You got to get through. You know what I'm saying? You got to get through these phases, man. There's phases. Right. You're looking at the end results of when he got burned and changed his face and his hair was uh, curly. No, nigga. I'm talking about the boy with the afro when you he was five, about, nigga. About, um, this is a whole lifestyle. This is right, a right. lot to deal with. So yeah, yeah, he had the big nose. He changed it to the little nose. Nah, Michael this Jackson is a is different. Lit. Michael Jackson is a different level, and I think for me, and I never expressed it like that on here because I try to give y'all y'all shine with Chris Brown. But right. bro, this a, this some this is a hell of a situation. Yeah, I gotta go Chris with Chris Brown Breezy. And Chris Breezy gonna tell you that. I don't have to. Man, tell he you gonna that. tell you that on camera. He no, no, on. no. Oh no, he gonna tell you that for real. Nigga, that nigga cried when Mike died. That nigga flip it on BT. I did too. I was upset. Cry. I remember. Literally, you, you cried I remember. too. I was, I was very upset. Nigga, you gonna be a good actor. The niggas like you be crying and stuff, you know, when Michael Jackson died? Really? I cried you in class. Cried? There's a monologue on my Instagram I cried. For what? I did a, I did the Fresh Prince monologue when he was like, oh, why my daddy I seen leave? that. You did a good job on Appreciate that. Appreciate that, I, man. I, I watched that. I, I was like, that boy dope. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm watching what you're doing. But yes, you, sir. You, and, and, you, and you, your tenacity, man, you're going to be dope. Just keep going. That's all I could tell you, man. Uh, there's a lot of times when I look at things and I see our people, we don't have people like you in Dallas, man. And what you mean? I mean, like actors, good actors that really look like me, or, or but a younger me, but out here getting to it like that. We need right. that. I mean, this city needs so much, man. We need to bring people into this city and make them spend money with this city when they come right. here to be here for an event instead of paying them and giving them bags and letting them leave. And that's... Oh, I just hit y'all with that's, something. That could be like literally interview part two because I feel like Dallas, what we lack... We, we don't celebrate our characters here in hometown. Like Houston, you from Houston, they celebrate you, they promote you, they love you, they, hey, this is he from Houston. When you got characters in Dallas, niggas will bring up your past, niggas will try to throw shade on you. It's like, it is what it is. But I well, love my city, well, man. Though. We love you too. I'm, I'm Dallas, nigga. Stop playing. We here, nigga. We in now. I just started six months ago. I pull up, nigga. I looked I'm in here. here, and it's interesting. You know what I'm talking I'm about? Here. Say, man, thank you so much for coming on this show, yes, man. Yes, sir. Is it, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, my Instagram is Antonio Diego underscore live. Uh, my Facebook is Antonio Horton. And um, them the two outlets I'm on right now. Wow, man. man. So if you could go back and talk to the younger you when you was about 18, man, what would you, 17, what would you, 16, what would you say to that 16 year old guy? You from where you at now and what that guy's getting ready to face? Be patient. Be patient. What relax. about, what about don't relax. be scared? I was never scared. You were just, never scared? I was impatient. That little John that came out, you were never scared. Yeah, yeah. It was more impatient. You know I was impatient. Very I mean, impatient. there was some big fat dudes. I ain't never scared. Uh, bone Crusher. Bone Crusher came out. So you wasn't scared, because that's y'all era. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> I'll let your boy, man. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101.